Hello, this is Tony Myers on the Charisma Podcast Network, and this is Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. Every one of these podcasts are created to guide you to acknowledge your full healing. By his wounds, you were healed. So I want you to live that out. We aren't to live a life plagued by illnesses or injuries, but we are to live our lives with a healthy body. Moses, at 120 years old, had keen eyesight and strong muscles under the Old Covenant. We can attain that as well under the blood covenant of Christ. Today's episode is no different, but before I introduce today's topic, I want you to write down a miracle you've experienced in your own body. Do it right now. Every one of us has experienced a miracle at one time. Remember the miracle. Now, write down a specific area of your body you need a miracle. Then say to yourself, Jesus healed that. So I am healed of this. Send me an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com with your miracle request, and I will speak life over that need. Hello, and welcome to today's testimony. First, Heavenly Father, I would ask that everyone hears what they need to hear during my testimony, that each person gets what they need delivered to their heart. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is my true prayer. My ministry is about me being transparent in order to help out anyone that will listen. My ministry is to show people how to walk in God's power, in God's kingdom, being led by the Holy Spirit. So that as we go through this life, we can be blessed with the many blessings that the Heavenly Father has for us, that we can all live a fulfilled life free from sickness, free from disease, illnesses, just glorifying His name. And being transparent is very important to me. And today, that's exactly what I'm going to do, is be transparent. I've got a testimony to tell, and I'm going to give it to you. I gave it Monday night on my live stream, and I thought that was going to be the end of it. I had something else prepared for today. I wasn't going to get into this today for tomorrow's podcast. The podcast will be released tomorrow. I had something entirely different picked out. The Lord wouldn't let me remember what I was going to teach. He wanted me to talk about this testimony. And so that is what I'm doing. I was in the middle of writing an article about it as well. So on August the 26th, and let me preface, pre preface this first. 
At times, I have always thought to myself because of how I would react if I was attacked. Would I, would I turn the other cheek? And when I say that, I'm talking about physically. I'm not talking about um, letting someone off the legal hook, per se. I just want to make that clear. I'm talking about literally. If I would turn the other cheek, you know, in my past life, 15 years ago, prior to my healing of Lou Gehrig's disease, prior to me being a believer in Christ, I had severe PTSD, and I was also a very aggressive personality. I was very hateful. I would attack people. I had triggers from the PTSD. So after I became a Christian, every now and then I would think about how would I react if I was attacked today? What would I do? Would I go back to being the angry Tony? Would I, you know, what would I do? Would I indeed? Turn the other cheek. And let's be honest, until we're faced with the situation, do we really know? Yes, I always wanted to think, well, yes, I would. I'm a different person now. But did I know I would? No, I didn't. On Friday, on Friday, I started talking to a fellow. He was a fellow vet, a veteran, and just started talking about some of the places that I had been, some of the units I'd been in. All of a sudden, he attacked me. It came out from nowhere. Before I knew it, my butt was on the ground and I was being assaulted. I was hit a conservative number would be 20 times, probably a lot more than that. I just want to be very, <laughs> I'm trying to be very transparent here. There was a fella that jumped in tried to protect me. I was on the ground. I was helpless. Completely helpless. And getting, being known to a pulp and then all of a sudden he was gone. I don't even know. I didn't even see him leave. All of a sudden, I, all of a sudden the blow stopped. I am guessing just because of when in our conversation that happened, I'm guessing that this fella had PTSD. I've, I'm guessing I said something had triggered him. So my first thing is, yes, I did turn the other <laughs> cheek. Now, whether that was voluntarily or not, a little bit of both, probably. I had no desire to fight the man. Yet, um, <laughs> you know, so there I am getting pummeled. All of a sudden, he's done. I didn't see him leave. I don't know where he went. I have no clue. I have no clue what caused him to stop. Uh, the last words that I remember was, he said, I'm going to kill you. And then all of a sudden, it stopped. Now, one might ask yourself, okay, where's the Holy Spirit? 
I talk, I'm a supernatural being because of the Holy Spirit inside of me. We are new creations and I absolutely believe that. And now, you know, I've had time to process this now. It's been six days since it happened. And it's important, you know, I fully know that while I was getting my butt handed to me, someone else somewhere in the world was being assaulted and fared far worse than I did and lost their life, why didn't I lose mine? And I'm going to give you one reason why. That is because the Holy Spirit is in my daily life. Nothing wasn't anything I did. It wasn't my great faith. And in fact, these last Quite a few episodes I've been talking about trusting in God, not, not in ourselves. This is what I've been talking about. I've been talking about how Paul stated that God told him, when you are weak, I am strong. Therefore, I would rather glorify in my weaknesses that the power of Christ will work through me. I was helpless. That always gives the Holy Spirit the room to come into the situation. If I had gotten up and attacked the man, or if I had gotten up and tried to mount a offense or even a defense, I probably would have been killed. Now, what kept me down on the ground, I would say one was the Holy Spirit. And two was probably the fact I knew I was helpless. Now, by all means, please don't misconstrue this I'm telling you not to protect yourself. I'm not saying that. I'm giving you what happened with me. But I was defenseless. I have seen many miracles. I've experienced a lot thing, a lot of things, which. I believe, led me to this point. <laughs> and so, even if in my thoughts, because I don't really remember what I was thinking exactly, but in my heart was, help me God. In my heart was, help. Because, you know, it's our heart beliefs and our faith, everything that's within our heart, that's what comes out during any instances, during any um, circumstances. That's what matters. Um, we may have thoughts in our head that are different from what is in our heart. What was in my heart was help. Now, many people will ask, well, but your eyes were all bruised and all. Where was the Holy Spirit for you? I will tell you where he was. He was my shield. He was my shield because of this. As many times as I was hit, my whole face should have been swollen up and bruised 
very badly. I should have had a broken nose. I should have had swollen lips, cut up lips, bruised lips. I should have had a concussion. I should have had a broken jaw. And my eyes should have been swollen shut. You figure just being hit a couple of times would do that to a person. As many times as I was hit, I should have looked like Rocky Balboa after two rounds. So the Holy Spirit was shielding me. And in fact, I do have a picture of what I look like. And this was after I was cleaned up and all. But you can see it was not as bad as what it should have been. So where was the Holy Spirit? He was right there protecting me. I live by the motto, the Holy Spirit is giving life to my body. I live by the motto that I want to rely on the Holy Spirit because I can't do anything. And that was very true in that instance. There was nothing I could do. And that's when the Holy Spirit can come in and perform the way he performs, miraculously, supernaturally. And it didn't even have to do with my great faith. But when we live a life realizing our weakness, realizing that we do need him in all things. Just like when I had Lou Gehrig's, now none of my actions demonstrated such faith or anything like that when I was undergoing Lou Gehrig's. As soon as we give up, he can come in. As soon as we stop relying on self, that's when he can come in and that's when the miracles happen without striving. I did nothing to deserve to be shielded by the Holy Spirit. I believe that because of this time that has passed, I've developed a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it is now so natural for me that I'm not relying on myself. I know myself can do nothing. And so when we stop with the self-effort, that is when the Holy Spirit can come in and intervene. Other people, I'm sure, and in fact, I had a woman at the gas station the other day. You look like you've been hit by a Mack truck. What happened, Tony? And a few words I just told her, but it looked terrible to her where, you know, she made a statement, so where was the Holy Spirit? I, he was there protecting me. That's exactly where he was. And these these days following that has really shown me that as I've had time to process it in that, oh my gosh, it should have been so much worse. I didn't do anything to make this happen. He did it. I'm not even going to claim it was my great faith. <laughs> I was helpless. I want every person to hear me. 
that's we look at submissiveness and I have looked at submissiveness in a bad light but being submissive really is just letting the Holy Spirit lead us and we being like little children just doing the way he wants us to that small still voice letting his actions guide us and that comes from just relinquishing control. Realizing we don't have the control. When we put it in his hands, he's the one that knows what to do with the control. And the more we have that revelation, then that's where things automatically work out for the better. Because it's no longer us trying to figure it all out. It's no longer us trying to manipulate the situation to turn it out the way we think it should. In that case, like I said, had I tried to stand up for one, the fellow who was trying to help would have been taken out of the equation because now I was standing up, now I'm a bigger target. And like I said, I probably would have ended up dead. Those who try to save their lives shall lose it. Those who lose their lives shall save their lives. And so it is knowing that I don't have control, trust in the Holy Spirit in all my life, letting him emerge from me. That's what takes the handcuffs off of the Holy Spirit and lets him get involved in it. Now that looks differently for different people. But I would tell you right now, the fact that I am here today, once again, is because our Heavenly Father is a loving Father. The Holy Spirit is in us and is willing to protect us. We get in our own way Time for us to take a step back, be ourselves by every and any means, but live from him, his guidance. And when we do that, and when we trust in him, where it's on automatic trust, not just words that are coming out of our mouths, but in our heart, and when we're transparent with him, then that's when the supernaturally just naturally flows out of us. It is he that lives within me. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ in me. He's living through me. And when I know that I'm weak, that's when he can work. How do you get to that place? By being submissive, by being a little child and knowing that we don't have it under control. And then we let his peace, his comfort, subdue us and overcome us. <laughs> So hopefully this will reach you and touch you and give you a new revelation. And so while there may be discoloration around my eyes, I am so thankful for the Holy Spirit because once again, I know what he did for me that day. 
I know since then, throughout the whole thing, I never felt pain. And in fact, even after that, uh, I was honestly full of energy. I honestly didn't feel like I had just gotten beaten the crap out of. But that was the Holy Spirit giving me his energy. And just so happened, the fella that was trying to help me out had a spare T-shirt. My shirt was soaked with blood. My pants were soaked with blood. So right now, I thank the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. It's time. Take Jesus outside the four walls of the church into your daily life and that is simply through submitting and letting him guide us and not our human rational reasoning or wisdom. We know his voice. The more the more that we focus on the spiritual, the more sensitive we are to the Holy Spirit, the less sensitive we'll be to the physical realities. And then the physical realities become the spiritual truth. And I'm not sure I put that exactly right, but that's when the physical reality changes to spiritual truth. That is when we see things as they were meant to be, not as, not as they are in the physical world. Hopefully each one of you have gotten something out of this. And this is just Tony being real can you have this type of protection yes the lord is no respecter of persons but it's in realizing that we are weak and that we don't know and then we can be guided without even really realizing it i would say it was probably Friday night that I started understanding. I was just reacting to what the Holy Spirit was telling me, even though I wasn't sitting there and aware of it. And that's one thing that I really want to drive home as well, is when we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then we react without even realizing that's what we're doing, following his lead. But that is what we're doing because we're paying more attention to what he's saying than what the world's screaming at us. Just like a little child. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Thank you for watching my t channel. Now, hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. There you go. Click it. All right. Good. Write a comment. If you would like prayer, write a comment for prayer. Give me some feedback. What about this teaching helped you? What didn't help you? Now, if you would like to partner with Outside the Four Walls Ministry, my ministry, then simply go to TonyBelieves.com and we appreciate you wanting to partner with us to reach the lost and see everyone healed. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed.
and be a blessing.